לפני לפני שהתקבלתי לתוכנית לא ידעתי בכלל כלום, לא ידעתי על... על הניסיון התנגשות בכלל, לא ידעתי שזה קרה. הבנתי קצת יותר את הסיפור, ולמדתי ששטאופנברג, הדרך שלו להתנגד הייתה לא מה שחשבתי בכלל. זה היה דווקא מאוד מעניין להבין כאילו מה הייתה המטרה שלו בהתנגדות וזה ממש מעניין. אז הוא היה קצת בסיסיון דויד של וידאו שלנו בשולה, על תמה, אבל שטוף פרק פרסיוני שם הוא נשאר נשאר. אז גם אבל אני שוטקה מהנה אושלנו, אז אני חושב שאני 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 חושב which is a subject that you don't normally talk about in Israel, of course, because it's not very connected to the Jews as other things. So we need to like, figure out what he did like, in the Mendel block. Okay, so the second question is... That thing. Oh, No, no, They use to communicate and uh, to plan 20th of July. Um. I think my um, perspective only changed in that way that I even got more respect because I dig deeper into it and got more knowledge about what they were actually doing and how they did like the things they did and what their beliefs were. We're looking for the different memorials in this side here and what they commemorate, like what they're standing for and what their meaning is. I don't even know what it says. <laughs> I'm speak German. I think it's like, yeah, I think it's good that those words are written there to show them, like to pay the people respect. But I had to read it like three times until I got what it was saying because like the language is so old and I don't think everybody gets it, like what it's supposed to say. So maybe that. Yeah, because of the old language. We don't know the words, so we can't translate all the words into English. So that's a problem. So we have to like describe it for them. Yeah. We got the general idea that it speaks about respect and like yeah. for the dead people. So I think we got the point. So it says like the people who died for Germany at the 20th of July uh, 1944. So it just shows respect to the people who sacrificed their lives. From what I realized, what I've been told, uh, and I don't know if I'm correct, uh, he just didn't agree with the way Hitler did it, but not with the idea of what it is. Like, he did believe there was a better race, he just didn't believe with the way Hitler did it, and he thought they needed another the government. I know now how different people had like different opinions that aren't just uh, the complete opposite, but something also in the middle from the Nazi uh, ideals. So you think Stauffenberg was like in the middle, like he wasn't a Nazi, but he also wasn't like a resistance fighter? Or... I think he was in the middle between the uh, Nazi way of thinking, like this, uh, the racial rankings and all of that, and saying that uh, the Nazis are completely wrong and, not, and their methods are not right. 
He did what he thought was right for Germany, for him, for the future. So yeah, he didn't die for Israel or the Jews, he died for Germany. We are at a historical place where different people are remembered. Look for a memorial that is not that old, it is from the 20s, and is located on the edge of the Bender block. When you have found it, try to answer the following questions. So let's find it and then... Okay. Justice and freedom. Okay. Oh, yeah, and here you have a proclamation. Yeah, so here we have like books with uh, names, right? Yes. It's like uh, names of military yes. men who served. Yes, and they died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. who died, obviously. It's called the Book of Commem Commemorations. Yeah. Not many people come here. It's not really a central street or a central place. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we weren't on a really uh, like on a mission to search a memorial, I don't think we we would have stopped oh, here. Oh, I get what you like it's not uh, people going against the military like we saw there. Here it's people going with the military or like military men. <laughs> I think uh, something about Stauffenberg and being like a Nazi soldier all these years, um, there is something like problematic about it because obviously like he fought for Hitler and like for everything Hitler stands for all these years. He was a military man before and he just like went with the military and it's good that he had a change point and I think it's good to remember him yeah. as like not being perfect of course um, also ich denke, das kann man jetzt nicht so schwarz und weiß sehen, weil also ich denke nicht, dass Schaufenberg alleine das Attentat begangen hat aus moralischen Gründen. Also das kann ich mir nicht vorstellen. Also ich finde auf jeden Fall, er ist ein Widerstandskämpfer und ich glaube auch, er ist ein richtiger Widerstandskämpfer, weil er hat ja alles sozusagen von der anderen Perspektive gesehen. Also er war ja auf der bösen Seite sozusagen und war ja auch wirklich überzeugt davon und hat dann aber selber für sich gemerkt, okay, nein, das ist nicht das, was ich will, da, damit kann ich mich nicht identifizieren und, und das finde ich wirklich, zeigt große Stärke und ähm, ja, zeigt auch, dass es ihm wirklich wichtig war und ähm, das finde ich sehr, sehr mutig. Ähm, also ich denke mal, so Gewalt anzuwenden, ähm, also ich halte da nicht so viel davon ähm, und halt auch Leute umzubringen, aber ähm, Hitler war halt schon eine sehr extreme Person, also man muss das halt alles so in Relation sehen. Und wenn man jetzt sieht, was er angerichtet hat und ähm, wie viele Leute halt gelitten haben, denke ich, dann war das so mehr oder weniger der einzige Weg. Und dann ist halt vielleicht auch einfach mal die falsche Methode ähm, generell halt dann einfach der richtige Weg am Ende. On the outside it looks quite small. Now that we're inside of it, it's like huge and it's like such a momentum. I actually think it's a pretty impressive place because I think like the deeper you go into it, like the higher the stones get. It's kind of depressing feeling when you go into it because like the higher the stones get, the smaller you feel. And it creates that atmosphere that you feel like how it was for like the Jews and for their families, like how the time was when they were like murdered and how life was for them. From the ghetto, they moved to Auschwitz. Uh, the little sister, Ethel, and the mother uh, were immediately killed uh, in the gas showers. Um, his older sister, uh, Rachel, she was killed in a death parade. She died there. I don't think I can like definitely say if I'm embarrassed or proud of my family history. For me, it's like 
family history is a big thing because it's kind of part of my identity. Like when I did research on my family, I also found out that some of them were Nazis and part of it. And I think back then they didn't have like a lot of chances if you weren't a Nazi or if you tried to resist, that meant like death for you. My grandfather was uh, released from Dachau and at the end of 1945, he, with the youth Aliyah, he came to Israel. He was around my age, actually he was around 16. And he, at this point he lost both of his parents, both of his sister, he came to Israel alone. Also, er wurde bei einem Kampf an der Ostsee irgendwie von, den russischen, äh, von der russischen Armee festgenommen und irgendwie verhaftet, aber er kam irgendwie wieder frei und keine Ahnung, auf jeden Fall am Ende vom Krieg hat er noch gelebt und kam dann auch wieder nach Hause. Ihm hat sein Job ja sehr Spaß gemacht und er mochte den Beruf schon als Jugendlicher und so, wollte er immer Soldat werden und von dem her, ich finde es halt die Vorstellung, dass er wahrscheinlich, ähm, also ich gehe mal davon aus, dass er andere Menschen getötet hat, ist schon krass. My great grandmother was in the Holocaust in Bergen-Belsen. Like most of the stuff we know is from her family that also managed to survive. And they told us, not her. Um, I think she didn't want to tell us, she didn't want it like, she didn't want to talk about it too much. We always wanted her to talk about it. I think if, if she doesn't talk about it, then it just like dies with her. And they're all like pretty old. So if you don't talk about it, it will just disappear. I think als ich dann so die anderen Geschichten gehört habe von denen, so auch mit, keine Ahnung, Konzentrationslager und Flucht und so, war ich halt schon so ein bisschen, ja, soll ich das jetzt erzählen? Und das ist komisch, weil die alle, also es hatten halt alle vor mir so irgendwie eine Geschichte mit Flucht und so. Wusste ich nicht, ja, soll ich jetzt das sagen? Weil er hat ja auch Menschen getötet und so. Und dann, ja, keine Ahnung, aber ich habe es einfach erzählt. It's very, very hard to hear those stories, but it's not her fault. She, she, she has no responsibility over it. Uh, it's also important to hear those stories. Uh, I want to know like everything from all the angles. Uh, it's hard to listen to it. I mean, uh, seeing my grandmother's life after and my father's life after and like how it's affected even me, who was born so many years later. I actually got to know like things that we never learned in Israel, like um, that about Stauffenberg, like if he could have like killed Hitler, if he, if he succeeded, that it was like a whole different story. We come from different sides, but it's like, shared history. Not even 100 years later, we can come together again and talk about what happened here. Well, it's such a horrible thing that happened and it's so, so important that we like relearn and talk about what happened here because it shouldn't happen ever again. I think uh, it's, a, it's a great honor for me to be like in, in a generation where I can talk to German people and not like try to hide it or feel uncomfortable with it. A lot of fun in meeting students that are a lot like us. I actually became like good friends with them. In general, I learned to respect and I learned to listen more. <laughs> It's our legacy, it's important, it's our history. In Hebrew there's a saying uh, that says a, a nation that doesn't know its history will never know his, um, his future.